How you doing everyone? Joe from Mahogany Outs. I hope you guys are having a great day. In this video, we're going to talk about the whole breeding process when it comes to the hog nose snake. This is your complete guide in five easy steps, and we're going to start it here on Hogging Outs. <laughs> Now, step one is the brumation process. When it comes to brumation prep, guys, you want to make sure that you do not feed your hognose snake for at least two or three weeks. The reason why is you want to clear their whole digestive tract system to make sure they have no fecal matter inside because if they do, you might run into some problems. Now, after a minimal of two weeks on no feed, you want to turn off all heat source for a week and keep your hog noses in their tubs or their terrarium at room temperature. After a week of room temperature, you want to prep your brumation tubs. And what I do is I use a mix of coarse coca core and also reptile sand. And I fill the brumation tub about halfway of the coarse coca core and about a half an inch or one inch of the reptile sand. And once you have that mixture inside the brumation tub, I like to spray it down because you want a little humidity. You want it a little moist inside the brumation tub. Now, a little humidity, a little moisture on the bottom of your brumation tub is good. You do not want to go in brumation with dry substrate. And the reason why you want to do that, I've heard stories of people putting their hog noses in substrate that was very dry. And you know what, guys? They lost their hog nose. Their hog nose died in brumation. Now, when it comes to cool down, a lot of people like to use their garage or their basement, and usually they can get that desired temperature of 54 to 56 degrees. Now, I know there's a lot of breeders out there that will brumate at room temperature for about two or three months. Yes, you can breed hog noses that way, but I prefer the brumation method. Now, I do use a wine core. My wine core tops out at a temperature of 64 degrees, and it goes all the way down to 48 degrees. Now, when you have your hog noses in a brumation tub and you're ready to put them in the refrigerator, you know, in your basement, in your garage, or in my case, my wine cooler, I like to put them in exactly at 64 degrees. And over the next four or five days, I like to gradually bring down the temperatures two or three degrees a day until I hit my desired temperature, which is 54 to 56 degrees. Now, some breeders do not add water, water balls into the brumation tubs. Now, in my case, I do add water balls. I add water balls for about two days take it out, wait two weeks, and then add them again. So when it comes to brumation time, I brumate my hog noses at the low temperature, the lowest temperature for two months. Now I know some breeders that do brumate three and four months. Now my requirement will be a minimal of two months. Now when it comes to bringing your hog noses out of brumation, I do a three-day quick warm-up out of brumation. Now when it comes to my warm-up process, I put the wine cooler straight up to 64 degrees for one day. I bring them out of the wine cooler next day, put them back in their tubs or terrariums and keep them at room temperature. And on the third day, I put the heat tape on or the heat lamps on and I get them back up to normal temperatures. And when it comes to breeding, I like to keep my temperatures between 82 to 85 degrees and the ambient temperature between 76 and 79 degrees. Now, when it comes to my light cycle, a lot of breeders like to do the light cycle. Some do not. My light cycle is 12 to 14 hours a day. Now, after two or three days at normal temperatures, you can offer your hog noses their first meal. I like to feed my females two small meals a week and my males one meal a week. Now at the end here, if you want more detail on the brumation process, I did a video, a live feed, a live stream about three months ago. You can check that link out below in the description box. Now the next step in the breeding process is pairing your hog noses. Now of course you want to make sure you have a female and a male when you pair because you know, it's pretty obvious. You shouldn't make that mistake. Now when it comes to the weight of the female, at least 220 grams some breeders have bred females at 195, 197 grams. But when it comes to the age of your female, you want to make sure she's at least two years of age. Now, when it comes to the males, the males should be at least 50 grams. Some breeders have bred males at 45, 47 grams. But the minimal age requirement for breeding males should be at least one year of age. And of course, I need to emphasize here the minimal age requirement for females is two years and one year for males. The next important thing I need to bring up is ovulation shed myth. Now, there's a myth out there where people on YouTube will state, hey, listen, wait until your hog nose, your female hog nose, goes into an ovulation shed. After her ovulation shed, pair the male with the female. Well, guys, don't wait for an ovulation shed because most of the time, your female will not have an ovulation shed. Now, when it comes to pairing, if your hog nose is feed or not, you can still pair your hog noses. Now, I usually pair 14 days after normal temperatures. Some breeders like to get them in there right away and pair them, do first pairing after 6 or 10 days. 
And of course, the main tip here is get them locked up, get them pairing as soon as possible. Now, when it comes to pairing, I like to pair my hog noses two or three days at a time, give them a two-day break. And during that two-day break, I like to feed them on their first day of taking a break. And two or three days after, I'll try pairing them again until I confirm a lockup. Now, once you confirm a lockup within one or two weeks, maybe even three weeks, you should be good to hit your female's ovulation cycle. Now, I've talked to a lot of breeders on what temperatures out of brumation should you keep your females and males at. Now, in my case, I keep the warm side between 82 to 86 degrees max. I try to keep the ambient temperature between 76 and 79 degrees. Now, after you confirm the lock with your female, feed her two small meals every week until she goes through her prelay shed. And once your female goes through that prelay shed, make sure you start creating your lay boxes. Now, the next step in the breeding process is creating your lay boxes. Now, I use a mixture of fine cocoa core and also sphagnum moss. What I like to do is get a big block of fine cocoa core and pour a lot of water on that block until it starts breaking apart. Once it starts breaking apart, I try to fill the lay box about halfway with the fine cocoa core and then mix in some sphagnum moss. What I like to do after I had the mixture all in there, I grab a big clump of that substrate, go to my sink, and squeeze all the excess water out because you don't want water pouring out of that substrate. Once you have all that excess water out of the substrate, you should be good to go for your lay box. Now, when it comes to my lay boxes, I use Sterilite tubs. What I like to do is cut about a three-inch hole on one side of the lid because, of course, it keeps that moisture inside and it's easy access for your hog nose to get inside. Now, after you have your lay box all ready to go, and this should be after your female has her prelay shed, you want to offer that lay box to her and then add her to the lay box so she knows where to lay her eggs. I usually add that lay box into the terrarium two or three days after their prelay shed. Now, after you add that lay box or your female into the tub, your female should lay her eggs within 10 to 16 days after her prelay shed. Once your female is done laying her eggs, make sure you get those eggs out of the lay box and put them inside their egg boxes within 12 to 24 hours. Now, on to the fourth step of the hog nose breeding process, and that is incubation. The incubation process, creating your egg boxes, getting those eggs inside the egg boxes, and putting them inside your incubator. Now, when it comes to creating egg boxes, guys, it's fairly easy. It's similar to the lay box process. I use fine cocoa core. I put water in there and I make it damp. I don't make it wet. You don't want it too wet because that will harm the eggs. Now, depending on what egg boxes you use, I like to drill one or two small holes on the top of the egg boxes. Do not drill holes in the top of the lid because you want to keep that humidity inside. Now, when it comes to putting your eggs inside the egg boxes, I like to make a little divot inside the substrate and lay the eggs about halfway down into the substrate. And I like to separate them about an inch apart of each other. Now, when it comes to transferring the eggs from the lay box into your egg boxes, you want to get a little magic marker, like a Sharpie marker, and just put a little mark on the top of the eggs inside the lay box just to make sure they're still standing up straight. And you want to grab those eggs out of the lay box and gently place them inside your egg box. So once you have all your eggs inside the egg boxes, put the lid on and put them right into your incubator. Now, when it comes to incubating the eggs, the temperature should be between 82 and 86 degrees. I like to keep it around 85, 86 degrees. Now, let's move on to step number five here on the hog nose breeding process, and that is the hatching process of your babies. Now, when it comes to hatching of the eggs, it depends on the temperature you have them in incubation. And the hatching of your eggs should take place between 49 and 54 days. The day your babies hatch, you want to grab them, put them in a large tub, and put a damp paper towel on the bottom. And you want to keep them all together for about a day or two until they have their first shed. Now, the final part of this whole process, guys, is separating all your babies and putting them in their individual tubs. Now, if you're using a rack system, you want to get those tubs and line it with paper towel, put a little small dish of water, and put a little hide in there on the warm side. And after a week of separating them, putting them inside their individual tubs, you want to try feeding them. And if they feed after their first feeding, well, guess what, guys? You're going to have happy baby hog noses. So there you have it, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is my breeding process. This is what I adhere to for the most part. If you have any questions or any concerns, let me down in the comment section and I will answer you. That being said, guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button, the like button, and share it with your friends and family. I will see you in the next video. This is Joe from Hogging Outs. I'm out. Cheers.